Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in the March of 2016 auction. And I have the perfect solution here to a problem that you may be encountering. Uh, if you happen to be married and spend a lot of money on guns and your wife is occasionally complaining that you keep buying guns but you don't buy her anything nice, like say, you know, something from Tiffany's. They do really high-end stuff, and that's, you know, that's the ballpark of a lot of high-end guns. What better name than Tiffany in classic, historical, very nice jewelry? Well, how about a gun made by Tiffany? They didn't quite make them, but Tiffany actually, since about the 1850s, has marketed, frankly, the sword or gun as art. So I have here two different examples of Tiffany handguns, and... Um, well, the whole point of this video is to take a look at the amazing artwork that is these two revolvers. So why don't I just bring the camera back right now and uh, let you guys get a closer look at these. So what we have here is a Tiffany Colt. This is actually a cartridge conversion gun. And we have an ejector rod and a, a loading gate. And that's, that's interesting of its own right. But this gun has then been taken and very nicely engraved and had a Tiffany grip added to it. So the Tiffany Company actually sold guns with these grips, and then you could have engraving done uh, to your taste. They had four main styles of these grips. This one is a Mexican eagle. You can see, of course, the Mexican emblem of an eagle holding a snake in its mouth and uh, clutching a cactus. Now, um, this was one. They also had an American eagle. They had one called Missionary and Child, and they had one with uh, Confederate battle scenes on both sides of the grip. And what was typically done was these grips would be cast in bronze and then plated silver. Um, there are a few examples. It's much less common to have them actually cast in silver. Um, and occasionally you may find them, or at least they would have been offered, plated in gold as well. So you can see from the wear marks here that this one is cast in, in bronze or brass. Um, this empty area was uh, put there as a place for an inscription not always used, and in this case it wasn't used. So that's where you could inscribe a specific name. And then we've got the Mexican eagle here, and then a kind of classic starburst pattern on the, the heel of the gun. Now the engraving for the original patterns for these grips was, uh, I believe, done by L.D. Nimschke, who was one of the, the famous names associated with uh, Colt engraving. And in fact, this particular pistol the rest of the engraving was done by Nimschke. So he has a, a kind of distinctive pattern. Someone spent a lot of money prettying up this gun. So the height of the popularity of this sort of thing was you know, the late 1800s, 1860s, 70s, going into the 1880s. Um, after that, this fell a little bit out of style. But uh, Tiffany continued to, do, to continue to offer these through the end of World War I. So you can find this sort of thing sold as, as late as that. Now, now this is clearly not intended to be a, uh, a very functional handgun. This is totally intended to be a work of art. So this would be presented to someone for service uh, or special occasion. Now Tiffany got back into doing this sort of thing in 1982. Uh, and what they do now is a design service. They don't actually market these in a catalog, but they will, on commission, design uh, engraving styles like this, decorative styles, and then the work is actually done by a third-party engraver. Um, so in this case, this one was done by a fellow named Andrew uh, Bourbon, who is a well-known and very well-respected engraver. Um, he was also a, a student to A.A. A. White, another extremely high-profile uh, firearms engraver. Um, this one, the design was called American Eagle for kind of obvious reasons. This thing exudes American patriotic spirit, certainly. Um, all of the engraving here is done, or all of the embellishment here is done in gold. You'll notice on, let's, let's get a close up of this. This thing is just stunning. So on this side, we have an eagle talon with uh, arrows, as in the one half of the American emblem. On the other side, we have an eagle talon with an olive branch. There are eagle heads around the cylinder with, with one space right at the top for a Colt patent mark. The feathering 
coming back down the recoil shields. These were made, this was actually one of two guns that were designed and uh, made for the American Historical Society or the United States Historical Society. They originally planned to do 10, uh, ended up only manufacturing two of them. Uh, they're both totally different. So this is a one of, literally one of a kind gun. And there you go, the American Eagle, designed by Tiffany and Co. And we've got these three-dimensional, just amazing uh, gold feathers on the barrel and the loading rod. The front has a, a feathered gold band, and the front sight is a freaking feather. Oh, so gold on steel there. It's really just a gorgeous gun. Uh, pearl grips. We have tail feathers on the butt of the gun. Uh, this was manufactured in 1994. So this is actually a fairly recent piece done on a uh, reproduction of an 1860 Army pattern Colt. So just, I mean, uh, it's, I don't normally uh, find myself particularly interested in this style of, you know, decorated handgun, but the work on this particular one was just really, really phenomenal and made me stop and take a second look. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. This isn't the sort of gun that I'm normally uh, jumping to get a look at, but you know what? These two, um, both the workmanship on them is very impressive, uh, staggering even, and just the, the interesting balance between what Tiffany was doing 150 years ago and what Tiffany's doing in recent times. I, I find it very interesting to look at the different styles and to see how the gun has been interpreted as art over the past 150 years. So if you would like either one of these, they are of course both coming up for sale. So if you take a look at the description text below, you will find two links, one to each of the catalog pages for these two revolvers. And uh, take a look at those, see their, the, the Julia House descriptions and their high-res pictures. And if you would like either one, you can go ahead and place a bid on one or both. Thanks for watching.